right, y'all. So we are back with another one here, and this is interesting. It got a little bit more juicy and spicy as I was watching this Randy Chavez um, little sit down with with Pags, and I it's, it's something something actually happened that's pretty interesting. So as we know, if you don't know, if you haven't seen my last video, basically Pags lost fifty thousand dollars with the Omi token and the whole bid forex thing. So now he's like he's out. He he's hands off right now. He doesn't know if he wants to go back in or, or he's he's actually going in on some other opportunities that he sees more so than than this project. But he continues to to explain and kind of break down why he basically was invested in the first place, because he sees a lot of potential coming to the Omi token. So a lot of people um, amid all the the scandal and, and all this this drama and stuff like that going on in the community. He's been hit by it, but obviously this this is a luxury. This is a luxury for Pax because he got hit by it, but 50K to him is not that much money, to be fair. So, I mean, it's a lot of money, obviously. But you know what I'm saying? Like, and comparing it to, to his net worth, it's not much. So that being said, he's going to be able to keep a level head after taking a loss like that. But, I mean, so, I mean, this could be something that, this could be an opinion that maybe you can resonate with, maybe you disagree with. I mean, it just, it just goes to show you, like, the, it's very, very important, no matter if you're losing or if you're winning, you keep a level head and you think about things just from a, a neutral perspective. And, like, don't, don't have any expectation for what you're hearing, just hear it and then decide what you just heard. Was it a positive or was it a negative? That, that's how I like to approach things at all times realistically that, that's how i like to approach things um well these days when i first started in vv everything was geared towards positivity um and that leads you down these bumpy roads of delusion so i i like to stay in the neutrals and yeah but anyway let's jump in hear what pax has to say and yeah let's see this, this could be bullish for the omi token he still believes in the omi token it's crazy it all kind of fits in now with respect to where marvel comes into this and how that falls into this, you know, mum's the word, but I'll tell you what, man. Yeah. It, good news is probably going to help the, the coin. It just is so insane how $22 billion, all this fucking time, everything's been fine. Now $22 billion Omi is now locked up, not being able to, you know, I mean, it could be a good thing because if you don't have the liquidity, you don't have a lot more sales, you don't have a lot of trading. So ultimately, if you have limited trading, it's all of those people like myself are out of the market because of fear and because of just, you know, uh, some, to be honest with you, just capability. I mean, you might not be resourceful enough to even, some people might not have exchanges they can even access at the moment. So it's yeah. just going to keep a lot of the buy pressure out, but sell pressure as well. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it really, uh, if all you're hearing is good things and you only have buyers on that side and a lot of the sellers can't sell because they don't have access right now, that could yeah. shoot this thing way, way up. That'll squeeze it, yeah. It'll squeeze um, big. It'll bottleneck. It'll probably, I mean, we can get, we can get double zero seven, double zero nine, easy, like easy, not even like a big deal. Yeah. And at that point, I'm hoping that you, um, you know, take the, the limo uh, Uber over the bridge, come over <laughs> to see me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'll, I'll, at that point, I'll just, I'll just meet you in Atlantic City. I'll just, I'll yeah. take a, take a plane down there. We'll just. <laughs> Forty-five yeah. minutes, bro. We're there. Yeah, it'd be great. Um, that that'll be fun. Uh, I can't wait for that. On the, opposite. So, I tell the, a, a lot of whales that I tell this story to. You have, talking about Bitcoin, and I'll get to that in a second. You have a, uh, interest rates that are going down about 0.25%. You're going to have a trillion dollars rip into the market. It's going to cause a market melt up. And then you you have the ETFs of Bitcoin that are that are already approved. You have the Bitcoin ETF trust funds that are buying like 10,000 Bitcoin a day, only like 900 Bitcoin per day are More. being mined. More. And then you when that gets cut in half to 450 per day, and then the Ethereum ETF funds get approved in May, suddenly you have this all of this money, new money uh, that's going into the market and people are going to take profit and what you have to understand about randy is that he's a very educated guy and informed guy so regardless of what you feel about his investment strategy because that doesn't really matter how another man invests his money is really none of your business in the first place but i mean when it comes down to the things that he knows he researches and the the 
the information that he has, he the information is there. The substance and the things that he speaks about and knows about is there. And and I like that. The thing is, the thing that, that I, <laughs> I question is how it always gets back to a bullish place for Omi. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's something that could be more emotionally driven towards what you want it to be. Like, you can hear the same information. One person hears it as bullish. One person hears it as bearish. Or when one person just has is undecided. It's like, based on your own emotions and how how much you need something to work, your mind can be swayed from this inf certain information to push it one way or the other. Um, but... I think that what's most important when watching content creators is the value in the things that they know, which what he knows is there. Like the, the things that he's considering is there. I think that what more people need to be able to do when they, when they watch content is consider the same thing he's considering. But what do you think about it? Not his thought, not his conclusion, not what he's going to do based on the things that he's talking about. What are you going to do based on those things? You know, like, are you going to research those, verify them, and are you going to make a move based on what you just heard? Because um, I think that this is this is why he's successful in the community. Like it's not just a, a whole everybody moon boy and behind them type of thing. I mean, it's a fun it's a funny narrative to to put out there, but his value is very clear. He spends most of his time talking to to people a hell of a lot wiser than him. Like obviously, which is why he has this level of wisdom to himself as well. He spends all his time talking to people. He spends all his time socializing and, and, and trying to understand things that he doesn't understand and networking. And I've, he has a lot of information to share. So I wouldn't sleep on the things. I know a lot of people judge him based on his his own personal decisions. But I think that he he's he's a solid guy, if you ask me personally. Like, that, that's that's how I feel. I feel like he knows, he knows his stuff. Now... If he draws whatever conclusion he draws, that's a grown man. I can't tell him what conclusion not to, to draw and not to draw. I can just say if I disagree or agree with it. And, you know, I wouldn't do certain things. That, that's, that's it. Like, that's it. I, I can separate my own personal my own personal opinion on what I feel is correct from what somebody else is doing. I have no, I don't really care. It's not, it doesn't impact me. So, yeah, just wanted to make that clear that it's very important to be able to really see someone for who they are and actually understand understand them more so than just trying to be on a high horse and down down people all the time. Because I do see a group of people constantly down in Randy and, and attacking Randy, which I'm not really with that. I mean, I know I've said tweets and stuff like that that may have appeared like that was the intent behind it. My, my intent is never to go after nobody. There's nobody in the world who I focus on enough to care to go after. I focus on building myself up. I've never attempted to tear anyone down. That, that has nothing to do with I don't I don't waste my time with stuff like that tearing somebody else down is not lifting me up like what does what does that it's a waste of time so I'm not that type of person at all I would give an opinion that some people who would want to tear you down can use as ammo to tear you down fair I maybe I've done that but no I, I don't have any malicious intent towards anything that I say I just have my own opinions that I share and sometimes my opinions can be used as bad. That's just what it is. It can be used for bad. My opinion is just my opinion. So I know it can be complicated to, to grasp, <laughs> but I'm just trying to, you know, put some things into perspective here. This money, new money uh, that's going into the market and people are going to take profit. And you have that metaverse narrative that'll hit. You have the NFT narrative that'll hit. You have millennials that are going to get the largest wealth transfer in, in, in the world that, that started the past few years. You now have 16 million families in the U.S. that are millionaires, as opposed to five years ago, we only had 9 million millionaire families in the U.S. So now more people are millionaires, more people that are like my age that spend their money on like stupid stuff. I spent $80,000 on one Pokemon card. People are definitely going to go and, and spend a lot on these digital collectibles. And if ever okay, <laughs> I mean, see, and this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Like, I may not agree with what he did, but he's become successful from it. Now, like, what I will say about this is that you can't dispute the fact that there's people like him, and who would know better than him? So the fact that he's strategically preparing for people like him is it actually stupid if you look at it from this perspective? Because he's done some very questionable things, putting this type of money behind Pokemon cards and stuff like that, and it's paid off. 
And one thing that I have never considered that I actually did just learn right now from listening to him, one thing that I've never really considered is the perspective that people can care about collecting so much and feel so much value or passion behind this that they that they do put this type of money behind it. They do get, so there's people who feel this way and then there's gonna be a lot more disposable income around, especially moving into the future. So, but the, the thing is that that still doesn't change things though. That, that doesn't change the fact that I personally don't know what items on VV they would wanna go for. I don't know. And then guys like him set the narrative, to be fair, the people setting the narratives are the whales. It's the people like Randy. These are the people setting the narratives on what's valuable. So realistically, they control what's valuable. Because if you want to be in a circle with Randy or you want to be above Randy, you want it to be clear that Randy's net worth is here. You big dog, your net worth is here. You want what Randy has, but even better than Randy. So it's like, basically, guys like Randy become the baseline for what is going to be valuable on Vivi if Vivi delivers. Now, if some other platform new, like that, that's what would really shake shit up. If some new platform came out with what Vivi has, these type of partnerships, these type of licenses, and then they have utility. Then they, they're, they're getting it right straight out of the gate. Like they're ha they have cash out with, with legitimate companies and without all these crazy fees and stuff like that. If, if, if a company comes out and does this, even though they don't have first appearances, but they have a ton of utility, that, that's, that was always my fear with Fortnite. Because Fortnite, they may not have the first appearances, but it doesn't matter. If the whole overall experience is more fun, it's more entertaining, more engaging. Like, they have concerts in Fortnite. They have concerts. You can listen to music. You can see your characters dance and stuff like that. Like, it can be really dangerous. It can be very, very dangerous for, for Vivi. If, if a competent company like Fortnite comes over and wants to just take VV's sauce, you know? They have the same contacts to get all this IP that VV has, and they have more to offer to a holder of their IPs than VV has to offer. That's what makes them an extremely dangerous competitor for VV. But um, that being said, it doesn't look like they're trying to compete with VV just yet. So yeah, it, it's tough to still decide what, what you would want to hold on Vivi. And then the Omi token, I know he has faith in, the, faith in the Omi token. And to be fair, he has like 200 million. So if it goes up, it, it doesn't have to go up a significant amount and he's gonna make a ton of money. He, he stands to gain a lot of money from this. Um, So while, he, while a lot of people were banking on a dollar, were banking on $10 and stuff like that. And that's, that's what I was banking on. Like that's what I was banking on. Cause I knew that I wasn't gonna invest the amount of money to where I, I knew, I, that's why I said I was waiting 10 years because I knew it's gonna take a while to burn through all these tokens. But once they add more burn mechanisms, the token supply is gonna start dwindling and then the value is gonna go up once we get put on exchanges. And so the the, the scarcity is increasing, the, 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 the entry is becoming easier. The cost of entry is, is it's like, things was gonna work perfectly the way VV described it. Now it's nothing like that. And a lot of those price points that that we thought we could see is, are now in question. So, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a lot. We're in a different state where we gotta kinda like understand VV all over again. I know a lot of people wanna spin a narrative that nothing has changed, it's still the same, all this stuff, but a lot has changed. And so many people are still not even in a position to see just how much has changed. You may still hold conviction thanks to certain things, but a lot has changed. So re-understanding <clears throat> the project is definitely a must at this point in time. It's very important. And that's the stage I'm at where I'm 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 here still studying, looking, trying to understand things, and you know, gauge the sentiment and see what's going on with other people's mindsets and stuff. Everybody try to get one Bitcoin, there's not enough to for everybody to get at least one. And that doesn't count for what is already out of the picture with the hundred thousands of bitcoin each people each person owns and it could yeah, get stupid real it could get real stupid real ignorant real quick and and you know yeah this is just the beginning. I, I don't, I'm, I'm glad it's so crazy time flies three years just went by i'm listen i'm i'm hoping that you know we um i'm coming along my uh my vviversary it's funny how i come into the game almost exactly how many years i come out <laughs> it's a, a fucking amazing so uh, 
We'll see packs next month. <laughs> we'll see packs next month. <laughs> Yo, this man will be back, bro. Everything he said has been bullish, bro. This man is definitely about to be back. He ain't going nowhere. Um, but yeah, we gonna end the video here. I just wanted to cover a few things in this one, yo. Um, but yeah, Pags, man. Like, hey, shout out to Pags, bro. Like, I feel like he just, he, he kinda, next time he get a big bag, which in these markets, like, yo, like, that big bag could come soon. He gonna be back in VV, cause like, he, he got some heart into this project. And he's accomplished a lot within this community. Like, this community can put a, Come on, you know, have a have a take a toll on you. It can it can grab hold of you and just hold you because it's a it's a great community when people ain't on bullshit all the time, which is damn near all the time. But yeah, there we have it, man. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below, fam. Drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, fam.